Hello, you're welcome to another session of the tutorials on limits. Today's tutorials, we are going to take an intuitive approach to limits and try to get a feel for what they are and what they can tell us about functions. So the previous video we defined limit as a value that a function approaches as the input of that function approaches a certain value. So in simple terms, we see that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l. So in my previous video, I remember we gave a general overview of our limits and we saw a simple example. It's I normally call finding the normal limit of a function, just an algebraic substitution. So let's take this example to kind of remind ourselves what the previous tutorial. So Example 1 Finding the limit of the function x power 4 minus 5 x power 3 plus x squared minus 7 x x approaches 2 So you can see that for this question it's just a direct substitution of which we are going to do um, 2 power 4 minus 5 2 power 3 plus 2 power 2 minus 7 so this is basically the algebraic simple algebraic substitution that we have to do for this function right so if they say finding the limits of this function it just follows the theorem on limits of rational functions that we can find the limit by substitution so just a substitution you can do this and here 2 power 4 is 16 minus 40 plus 4 minus 7 which in all will give us negative 27 so the limits of x power 4 minus 5 x power 3 plus x power 2 minus 7 x x approaches 2 will give us negative 27. So that brings us to the concept of one-sided limits. So today we are going to build an intuitive approach on one-sided limits and also talk about um, continuity and limit to infinity and some special cases in finding limit of a function. So for one-sided limits, we do this with one-sided limits, like as the name implies, with one-sided limits, we will only be looking at one side of the point in the question, which has been given to you. So below is the definition of a one-sided limit. So we can define as the limit of f of x as x approaches a plus equal to l. I remember in my previous video, I talked a little bit about this one-sided limit. I said that a one-sided limit is a limit where we approaches from only one direction, either from the right or from the left so in mathematics one-sided limits are used to define the behavior of the function in question near a point as such um, they are also used to determine the asymptotic behavior of a function x maybe the value of x approaches infinity or negative infinity so basically in my previous video I 
talked about the two types of one-sided limits of which I remember I mentioned the right-sided limits which is x approaches a and then the exponent should be plus which is the right-sided limit as it has been illustrated over here and then the left-handed limit has already also been illustrated over there of which the a the x will be approaching a to the left of which the exponent is supposed to be minus so let's talk about the right-sided limit first the right-sided limit is a sided um is a, is a right-sided limit of a function at a point maybe x1 is a limit or the function acts the value approaches x1 from the right so if the right sided limits at this point may be at x equal to um, x1 it means that the limits of the function acts the value of x approaches x1 from the right therefore the value of x should be greater than x1 right that means you are doing the analysis from the right and not necessarily that x must be equal to x1 or based on this um, formula that I've stated over here x must not be necessarily equal to a so let's pick the left-handed limit the left-handed limit of a function at a point maybe x0 or for in this case let me use x equal to a for instance at a point x equal to a means that the limit of the function access approaches a from the left so <clears throat> i remember excuse me i remember my previous video i knew the cartesian plane which is here we have y and then here we have x so here we have x positive x values and here we have negative x values and then here we have positive y values and here we have negative y values right so since we are dealing with x when we are approaching the function from the right depending on the point that we are focusing on for, for instance if here is 4 and we are approaching this 4 and we are doing um, neighborhood analysis this is a term that one of my lecturer called Jomens used in class when I was doing my engineering calculus in my freshman year so when I'm doing a neighborhood analysis around 4 when I want to find the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit, it means that for the right-handed limit, I will be approaching 4 from this side. And the left-handed limit, I will be approaching 4 from this side. So it depends on the where the point is located. Right. Sure. So let's move on. So a function has a finite value at x equal to a if and only if both the left sided and the right sided limits are equal and finite so if the limit exists right it is equal to the common value of the one sided limit and this is something that we will talk about it in short time